This is going to be a quick tutorial about outlining in Scrivener. Sarah Goldberg had mentioned to me that she loves this program for writing but hasn't really figured out how to efficiently outline using it. So I wanted to share um, some of my um, processes and, and tricks. Um, I do want to mention though that I am not a very robust outliner. I'm definitely more of a pantser than I am a plotter. So my outlines, if I try to get too detailed, end up saying really vague lame things like and then they go somewhere and then someone dies so uh, just know that I'm very very top level when I outline so this may not be as robust a tutorial as you need but I did want to share some of my thoughts um, and Scrivener is not paying me to talk about how much I love this program I just wanted to, to mention that um, so let's say that I am writing a brilliant novel called The Hunger Games which we know I obviously did not write and Suzanne Collins wrote but for the sake of the tutorial let's pretend um, that I've sat down to write this novel and I want to um, do a little bit of outlining before I begin. And if you haven't read The Hunger Games for some reason, if you're in the, the small portion of the population that is not, I suggest you close this so nothing gets spoiled and uh, go get a copy of the book right now. <laughs> um, so when I outline, I like to use the cork board. Um, and we're gonna go to that now. Everything that you build on the cork board is gonna also build over here in the binder, which um, has all of the pieces that make up the novel. So. When I'm actually writing, in the writing view, here's the first line of the, uh, of the novel, I can draft in here and type and type and type, and this is um, really what makes up the novel, but all of the, um, all of the outlining I like to do in corkboard, and for each of these pieces of the novel, um, I write a little synopsis on these cards and those will actually appear again over here in the inspector when I'm actually drafting and that is a nice way to sort of see the, the bulleted notes and tips that you sort of left yourself um, when you were when you're in corkboard mode. So each one of my chapters right now is made up by one of these cards. Um, when I export all of my work, I usually don't title chapters. It'll just export as chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and that's actually how The Hunger Games is written as well. Um, but I found it really useful, again, since we're corkboarding and we're using each one of these cards as a sort of synopsis, I've always found it helpful to give like a one or two or a top level, this is what this chapter's about. Um, because that is the only piece you're ever going to see in the binder. And when you get into revising, at least for me, it's been really helpful to be like, oh yeah, I need to edit that scene where PETA's name gets called. I'm going to go to the PETA folder. I know that's what that is. Easier for me to remember than remembering chapter two or some random number. So um, that's a little trick I like to do. But so you see so far, I've outlined that the reaping is going to happen first, um, where Primrose's name is going to get called, and then in chapter two, Katniss is going to take Primrose's place, um, and we're going to get a little bit of backstory about Peta, the boy with the bread, once his name is called. Um, and then in the third chapter, right now I'm planning that, um, when I say I'm planning, I feel like I'm the brilliant Suzanne Collins. Um, anyway, uh, when I'm, what I'm going to have happen here is that Peta and Katniss obviously are taken by the peacekeepers. They say bye to everyone, um, and we get a little bit of backstory about Mock and Jays, and we also see who else has been um, taken as tribute. Now let's say I'm still brainstorming and I don't really know what's gonna happen next, but I do know that eventually um, we're gonna have a makeover. Katniss is gonna get made over and she's gonna meet Zena. So let's say that that's what happens next. I'm gonna duplicate this card. You can also double click on the corkboard always to add new things, but I like to just duplicate because it's gonna maintain the exact same folder structure. So that's a personal preference. But let's say a makeover is gonna happen next. Um, so we'll just say Katniss. Great, and then let's say that after that, um, whoops, I don't know why I'm not, there we go. Let's say after that there's a train ride where, um, and again, all, everything I write here is also updating in the synopsis, and this is the card in the inspector that I'll see when I'm writing um, and actually drafting the novel. Let's say Katniss and Peta um, head to the capital via train, and they're also going to meet Haymitch. Um, and I'm also going to make a note that he's going to be drunk because we all know that's really key and that's going to again help me when I'm writing. Um, so now I'm thinking a little bit more and I know eventually the opening ceremonies are going to start um, to sort of kick off the Hunger Games and that um, Katniss and Peter are going to have their costumes that are on fire and, and go out. Um, 
in the, the chariots. But I'm actually thinking now that that might happen uh, after the makeover. So what I'm gonna do is drag this guy here and you'll see um, now I have the train ride happening first, the makeover second, and that's all been updated over in the binder. So again, corkboarding is great because you can visualize the timeline of your story and anything that you drag around or rearrange, all of those updates are gonna also happen over in the binder. So even if I've written a whole chapter and I wanna rearrange order, there's no annoying copy and paste and reinserting things the way that you sometimes have to do in Word. You just can drag things around um, over here on corkboard, or again, in the binder, you can drag things around as well, and it will reorder, um, it'll reorder everything for you. So now I've decided they're gonna go on the train first, and then they're gonna meet the team, um, and they're gonna have their, um, the opening ceremonies um, with the, the girl on fire outfit. So again, this is how I choose to outline. And, and right now we're looking at a corkboard for part one solely, but you can even look at things at a very top level. And if your novel for some reason had 50 different parts, here I can even see the breakdown, um, the order of that. It's the tributes followed by the games, followed by the victors. Um, and at any point I can go um, back into the writing mode and jump to any single one of these things that I've outlined. You can see I've started, oops, sorry about that. You can see I've started to write things out and my synopsis exists, always sort of reminding me what I decided in corkboard mode. Um, so again, that's just how I like to use it. I know that's really top level. It works really well for me, as I said, because my outlines are just like what I have here. I don't do more than like two or three bullets per chapter. Um, so again, if, you, if you're really, really robust with your outlines and write like 50 page outlines, this may not help you at all, but hopefully you've learned a little something here. If you guys have any other questions um, about pieces of this software program that you would like some insight to, or you'd like me to talk through, I've been using it for about a year. Um, I love it, it's changed how I write, and I would be very, very happy to um, walk through anything else you guys have questions about and maybe share some of my thoughts um, and uh, processes when I'm writing in Scrivener. So yeah, leave me some notes in the comments and uh, I'll answer anything else that comes up. Thanks guys.